Hey there players, I'm Pruitt, this is Jim Davis. And if choosing between two classes is slowing you down, maybe just clear the cache by hitting Control Gestalt Delete and trying the best of both worlds. Gestalt characters on WebDM. <gasps> Jim. What, what's up Pruitt? How would you feel about doing a giveaway? What do you mean the giveaway? Well, okay, we have like all this stuff just like that we've acquired. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. And we could give it away to people who wanted it. I mean, maybe they follow us on all of our social medias like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and they subscribe to our YouTube channels yeah. and uh -huh. sign up for the mailing list and we could just pick a bunch of winners. You mean we could let the people know about our Kickstarter when we announce that we're going to have a Kickstarter? Yeah, we could do that. And do the biggest giveaway ever. <gasps> First off, the biggest, the baddest, it's five D&D Beyond Legendary Bundles. Each of these puppies is worth $565 and you get all the D&D books plus 15% off all future D&D products. You can create a campaign and share all of this with your players. Next up, two sets of artisan dice. One is redwood burl inlaid with electrum in an African mahogany case, or you can have these silver inlaid ones. The silver is from an ax that knocked out four people in nightly combat. That is no bullshit. Zoltar's Game Room, classic dungeon set from Dwarven Forge featuring all the things you need to get your collection started. A $50 gift card from Tabletop Loot. T-shirt from Void Merch and a copy of Ghosts of Saltmarsh, signed by us. Oh my god, yes! The biggest giveaway ever! Holy, I just... We will do a live drawing on, on October 26th to announce the winners. And you know, and you know that that link is here in the comments and in the description. Let's do a giveaway! <laughs> Let's talk about Gestalt characters on WebDM today. Let's philosophize. Yes. Since... I've only ever played a one shot with the Gestalt character, and that was like in second edition. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I love the idea, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's just like multi classing with less impediment. It, for one, it's like a very, it, I don't want to see it, yeah, it's a variant of multi classing. And to me, the first time I saw it, it's like shades of second edition, just the way that you're, you're both classes at once. Yeah. You know, instead of like having to choose with more like the third edition style uh, multi classing, like which level you're playing this time. For some reason, we get asked about this a lot. And, yeah. And it's just, it just seems like there's a rampant amount of Gestalt games out there that we just uh, don't know about. Uh, you, every time I go like looking and see, like, oh, are, are people playing a lot of these games? Who's asking about it? Are, is, is anybody out there writing up their experiences of what it's like to play through, you know, with characters in a Gestalt game or something? And nope, like, it's a bunch of people talking about it. It's a bunch mm -hmm. of people like, I, you know, look at these things, or have you seen this, or what's it like to run it? So I don't know, it feels like it, it's a topic that captures a, a good portion of D&D players' imaginations, yeah. and they can't seem to just, like, let it go. Yeah. And I, it's one of those where I find, like, I read them and I'm like, ah, maybe I'd play this. Yeah. More it's just a thought experiment, I guess. Well, yeah, kind of. It's, well, it's, it's the Marvel DC crossover characters. So when you have, like, Wolverine and Batman, Dark it's the Claw. same. Yeah, Dark Claw. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, that's literally, it's like, it's like fanboy fantasy. It's like being yeah, able sure, to yeah. finally, like, I want to do this, but this at the same time. Yeah. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Like, what is a Gestalt character? So a Gestalt character is where you are, are play two fully realized classes at the same time. Yeah. Taking usually the best of either of the options if they have something like overlap between them. So like all classes have a hit die, you're going to take the better of the two hit die for that. Like mm -hmm. all classes have, um, you know, class features or something if you have double class features like say extra attack you don't get extra extra attack you just sort mm -hmm. of take the better of those two which if say it's a paladin and a ranger that you're leveling up then they're both equal but if it's say a ranger and a fighter then the fighter's extra attack is better than the rangers right you get mm -hmm. more of them yeah um and so it, as far as i know it's gestalt characters as a way of making a character and sort of playing them began in third edition a book like a collection of house rules and it, it had like everything from all variant races to 
like racial classes, you know, where you'd be like, I'm going to take a level in Elf. Yeah. Um, to or racial paragons, I think they were called, to taking some like classes like the Ranger, the Bard, and the Paladin and turning them into prestige classes, all different variants for mm -hmm. casting. It's like if you're interested in just Wait, who variants. Wrote, who wrote that book? I don't know, actually. I, uh, I mean, I don't. The off third top edition of Unearthed Arcana? Uh, well, uh, th that's the thing. So uh, in, in third edition, there was the uh, Unearthed Arcana, which was a, I thought an that was homage. Monty Cook. Well, Monty Cooks did it, had an Arcana Unearthed. Oh, that, okay. That's <laughs> what Arcana evolved. Maybe it's because of the way you said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just threw me I off. always get them uh, mixed, uh, mixed up. That was Mal Havoc uh, Press, if I remember. Oh, right, right. All right, Monty, you're off the hook this time. <laughs> in first edition, Unearthed Arcana would introduce the Barbarian and the Cavalier yeah, right. and other kinds of classes and, and optional rules. And third editions was, and, and if you're, I find it's like worth going back and flipping through even now, but that's where the Gestalt uh, rules were found. It's one of those where I remember reading them and be like, oh, this is really cool, you know, the, just the way you could build characters in third edition. I remember us sitting around and talking about like, okay, how do we get the most saving throws yeah. out of a character in third edition? And we like, you know, all of us just hanging out on a couch with the PHBs open trying to figure out, all right, a monk's gonna be part. Of that. <laughs> monk's gonna be part of that. Well, we got throwing halfling, and yeah. <laughs> and you know that's when you get the you know crazy abominations like you know Mister Saving Throw, which has like one of every class level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can't really do much else. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, those initial plus twos <laughs> to everything. In that sense, that's how I kind of think of Gestalt characters as like this mental exercise. This it's sort of an exercise in creativity of like combining character concepts and mm -hmm. I'll look at it and go, oh, you know, if I'm gonna play a character like this, I'll just use the regular multi-classing rules. Like this looks unwieldy to me or I, I know myself as a player I would have a little bit of fun playing one and but after mm -hmm. like maybe two or three sessions I'd probably just be like I'm bored. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well let's let, let's finish going through the anyway, uh, yeah, we'll the, jump the, ahead a bit. The abilities <laughs> because like when it comes to like skills you get the better amount so, you know, if you've got Rogue and a Fighter, you would get four, but you sure. get to pick from both lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then you get down to, and you get all the proficiencies, like tool proficiencies, armor, weapons from both. Sure, sure, sure. It's worth pointing out that we're kind of like, the, the third edition rules don't map exactly well to fifth edition. Mm -hmm. And my initial thoughts were like, I don't think Gestalt would work very well in fifth edition because of the dip, you get different features at different levels, right? And so in, in my mind, I was like, ah, oh, you know, third edition it worked because like everybody had a sort of more unified class progression, I guess, yeah, or, yeah. or the way that you could swap levels out or like the fact that you'd have like quarter BAB. And then we started looking at the D&D wiki. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the Gestalt rules on the D&D wiki and going like, you know what, these aren't the worst like mm -hmm. translation of the third edition rules to fifth edition. So that yeah. is, those are the ones you're referencing, right? That's kind of oh, like yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's yeah, that's what I'm going off of. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you get you get the abilities from both. And now where it gets weird is the ASIs. Sure. Yeah. Because you basically get one improvement from each side at the regular like the fourth, yeah. eighth, twelfth, right? Yeah. You know, six nineteenth level or whatever. Uh -huh. But this is where fighters uh, have a bit of a bump because right. those extra ones at what, six and 14? Six and those, 14 for fighter, 10 for rogue. Yeah, you get those uh, yeah. wholesale. So right, if right, you wanna right. do a fighter rogue, that's your most ASI for your buck, right? This was the, the moment when I was reading through the section on uh, ASIs was when I was like, okay, you know, it seems like whoever put these together, it, it's a, they've given it some thought and you don't just get like double ASIs, you have to, um, you know, balance things out or, or, you know, trade both of them in for a feat. So there is some, yeah. like, nods towards not making it completely ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, if you're playing a Gestalt character, then I don't, I don't think you'd really have to worry about things mm -hmm. getting too ridiculous. You've already accepted that you're going <laughs> to go down this road. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, like we said... We get asked about it often. Not yeah. really sure how many people are actually out there playing it, but what do you think is the best situation to introduce a, like a Gestalt game? Certainly if you have a, a, a low number of players, mm -hmm. uh, a Gestalt game uh, it can be fun. You know, If you're worried about players who are prone to playing more fragile characters, or that's, those are the kind of characters they like to play, but you can only find a few people in the group. Uh, you know, one or two, really, <laughs> then you can have them say, like, oh, you know what, make Gestalt characters find a, you know, a concept or something that works for you, and, uh, you know, they'll be a little bit tougher, a little bit more versatile, and you can, um, 
I don't know, you can just kind of relax a bit because that mostly it's that they have more resources at their disposal, right? Well, yeah, because you're still only getting the hit points from one. Right. But you yeah. still, you know, if you went barbarian wizard, you got a basically a wizard with D twelve hit sure. points. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the saving throws are the most robust part where you get the yes. saving throws of both classes. Yeah. So really looking and making sure there's no overlap, I mean that's four of your six right there. That's the big thing for me, I think, is that you would find that uh, Gestalt characters are, do will have better saving throws, and I like that you you don't have to pick. You just combine them. Uh, it does mean that certain combos are less effective in that regard mm -hmm. than you would. So, like a fighter barbarian, which other you know outside of saving throws has a lot of overlap, a lot of great stuff going for it, and you still have proficiency in strength con, so you don't get uh, the benefit of the diversity from there. But you could easily have proficiency, you know, in wisdom through, I don't know, you know, cleric or something like that. In that sense, they will definitely be more powerful than, like if they were to split in two characters, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've got a cleric and a, a fighter uh, played by two separate people. Normally, uh, the two of them are gonna be more powerful than a single Gestalt character, except I think pretty much where it comes to saving throws. So yeah, I mean, that's something to keep in mind, I guess. You know? Yeah. They're and not, they seem tougher, but they might not be. You know. Well, I mean, I don't know. You, it, it depends on on how you pick it. I think because the the ability or the abilities that you have access to, yeah, you know, you have more of a chance of having like reaction shields or oh, things right. that make you more robust. Uh, because that's like your biggest benefit. I I see is just the variety yeah, that yeah. you have based on how you split your two halves. Yes, yeah. Um, and you know, you're, you're still gonna be, you know, you only have one hit die per level. If the upsides are, you you know, this works really well for uh, campaigns where you don't have a lot of players or you want a really high powered game and you wanna just test out your design chops, uh, making monsters and challenges for really tough uh, you know, creatures or, or characters, sorry, mm -hmm. or you just like it's a one, fun one shot to break up the you know what you normally do, which is a bunch of low level, low magic. To me, I see the pros. The cons would be, yeah, you know, you're you do just have the one hit die. Like it's it's not like you get double hit points or anything. You're still limited by the action economy, which well, that was going to be the you know, big, that's going to be the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, is, you know. <laughs> So I, you of know, that's why everybody's taking fighter as one half. Oh sure, well, fighter would probably be a very popular stalled half because of action surge, because of the increased hit die. Um, you know, a second wind is another good one. All the armor and weapons. Yeah, I mean, it's really, <laughs> yeah, it's, there's a reason people dip into fighter, right? Yeah. Or or start, you know, they're they're going to take one level of it, and it's their first level. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> one of the best two level dips you can get. Like I can it. see a lot of gestalt combos involving fighter, a lot of them involving warlock. Um, well, you especially know, for the heavy rogue. casters. Especially for heavy casters. Um, you know, action economy is a big limitation. We've already mentioned hit points and just sort of like the fragility of characters, which I've played a lot of 5th edition now, and, and especially 5th edition in the 3rd and 4th tiers. And I have yet to find a tier where characters in 5th edition can't be, can't be brought low. Like, they have areas of competency where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you know, you're really good at this thing, but the way saving throws work, which... Gestalt kind of shores that up a bit. Yeah. The fact that hit points, even though they might seem like they're a lot, a lot of the higher CR monsters are they hit harder. And I've had, you know, I've had games where I'm playing twentieth level barbarians, and I get maybe four or five rounds in a fight, and I need I need to you know take a break, heal up, you know, or reevaluate my uh, my strategy just because I'm taking too much damage. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that time and again with. Uh, high level play. There are DMs out there who sort of disparage, uh, you, know, you know, the higher level you get in in, uh, the, in D and D, the harder it is to threaten you in combat. But it's not necessarily been my experience. And I think you would, if you were worried like that, Gestalt characters would be too powerful, you wouldn't know how to challenge them or, or what to do with them in combat. Like I think you might find that because of the action economy, because of their, uh, you know, their fragility, that they're not going to be that much more powerful but they are that much more resourceful you're really looking at if you say you have two people at your part on your at your table one of them's a fighter rogue the other is a cleric wizard yeah. just to just to cover the base right, sure, old sure, school yeah. party yeah that's four characters in two but still they only have the hit points of two characters yeah and they can still only do their turn it around so right. you're only going to get one half or the other of each character using yeah. those resources so yeah. if you have if you have very savvy players mm -hmm. Then you know they're going to be just fine, but yeah. you still, if you throw enough at at them, that would be for a four-person party, that sure. might still be 
a bit much. They might be able to go longer to last longer. They'll mm -hmm. have more spell slots. They'll have access to more uh, versatility in spells and abilities. So you could find that, yeah, you might be able to throw more at them if mm -hmm. it's not overwhelming. Yeah. Right. So they might be able to last longer in a fight, whereas yeah. non-Gestalt characters will, ha will tap out earlier just because they've run out of their healing resources or their short rest abilities or whatever. Um, the Gestalt characters are like, okay, we, we, you know, this is wave eight. All right, guys, you know, <laughs> gather around. I'm going to use you know, my healing spell again. Everybody you know, get topped off and you know, here, here they come again. Yeah. And so those are the kinds of scenarios that you might lean into if you're playing a Gestalt game where yeah, they can last longer because they have more of those special abilities, even though they can't necessarily do any better with like big spikes yeah. of damage or enemies or whatever. Um, any better than a single class one. I think maybe the last con that I would consider when looking at Gestalt characters is mad. Is you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A lot of these builds are going to be multi-attribute dependent. Yes. Or mad. Yeah. Um, and not mothers against drunk driving. Although you still <laughs> well, should. Mothers do against D and D. Mothers against D and D. Holy shit. Maddened. My mom probably was a member of that mm. group. I don't know, man. Look at you now, mom. Pruitt's mom. We'll get you now. I love you, Mom. <laughs> you still need the attributes. Yes, you still to, need the to attributes. To make these right. things work. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So a lot of like the combos that uh, that I can think of that I go like, oh my God. Like I think of like the Barbarian Wizard. There's a lot about taking, a, you know, pairing up with Barbarian that works well for Wizard. But now you're looking at wanting four good stats, mm -hmm. right? You know, you're gonna want the, the classic three that barbarians are gonna, uh, you know, make use of, plus intelligence. And you probably don't wanna have a terrible wisdom either <laughs> because you, you don't wanna have, uh, you know, terrible perception. So it's, that's, those are the cases where I look at it and it's like, yeah, I, I can see the strength of something like that. Yes, you can't cast while raging. There's a lot of reasons why barbarians might not want to rage or spells you don't need to concentrate on. Once you get to certain <laughs> levels, you could throw up some spells and then you go into a rage yeah. and have a good time. And have a great time, yeah. Um, uh, and you can always come out of your rage <laughs> you on always, purpose. I look at that and it's like, okay, you, you could make a really interesting character. They would shore up each other's weaknesses rather well. But when I compare them to, say, a bard sorcerer who's just like doubling down on charisma, I start reminding myself that like D and D always rewards specialization, mm -hmm. and there's really no reason. Like the temptation, I think, with with the combos of Gestalt is to like broaden your base of abilities yeah, and to, to go like as much try as to cover as much as possible. Like, oh my god, I can do this paired with this, and I can be a more complete character. But like D and D is a class and level system, and when you double down on your class archetype, it always performs better, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, in that sense, I think Bard Sorcerers, because... Um, all the spells. Oh, the lore, a, a lore divine soul would just be, you'd have a, you'd have a ton of magic. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're able to take from the Bard, uh, you know, with, with lore, you've got like four spells from any, any. <laughs> anything. Uh, you've got, um, you know, with divine soul, you've got the Sorcerer and the Cleric. You could easily take three levels in Warlock with one of those, which is not, which is, to add that, uh, at least in the D&D wiki variant, you can multi-class with Gestalt, even yeah, though in we'll third edition... Yeah, we'll talk about that edition. at the end, because that, sure. that can get a little problematic. <laughs> a, a lore bard, uh, Divine Soul Sorcerer, has all kinds of magic, uh, you know, but, and really leans into the, uh, you know, getting the most out of their charisma. You know, they can't cast any extra spells or anything like that, but they've got the meta magic from Bard, they've got all the sort of abilities... Or sorry, from Sorcerer, they've got all the abilities to, like, manipulate the die and give out uh, either cutting words or, or bardic inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, from the bard and so like I think that could be a really fun class uh, and and it doesn't it also sort of like because you've got two contained spell lists there it sort of maybe like removes the option paralysis that a wizard or mm -hmm. someone else might uh, have where it's like oh I've got so many spells I don't know what to do that does uh, allow you to really stay on on theme though yeah like yeah having that that breadth of options yeah you know once you pick your theme of the type of caster you want to be yeah, there there is no there's no impediment to that. That's, oh, that's the right. thing uh, that that makes that very attractive. So other kind of combos like that, even if you're not necessarily doubling up on, uh, you know, on the charisma, something like a paladin with any of the other charisma classes is mm -hmm. going to be really fun. Yeah, uh, paladin warlock, uh, just to kind of you know look at it, it's 
you know, invocations from Warlock. There's the, you know, the benefits from having a patron, uh, the, the Pact Boon. All of that on top of the very nice and, and desirable stuff that you get from Paladin. Divine uh, Grace and Divine Smite and, uh, you know, all of, their, all of the, I don't know, the survivability of that. It's just a strong combination, and I think that I'd, I'd favor those kinds of combos over the ones that are more, uh, you know, broad or versatile. Oh yeah, well especially Paladin and Warlock because now you're just smiting all the time with those <laughs> those slots that come back on a short rest. Right. And you're just smiting, smite all day. Yeah. You know, um, another yeah. one to stay in that same theme, but like the Sorcerer Warlock. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, that, that is one where... I start to get a little like... Start to get a little, yeah, well, especially when you consider the short rest refresh and converting spell slots to meta magic and, uh -huh. and vice versa. You may want to <laughs> go over the uh, the way that they handle uh, spellcasting in the variant rules, finer tooth comb, but it does sort of feel like in those cases, you would want to just work out how all the details work. Is it possible, mm -hmm. you know, is it possible to switch between uh, you know, using your warlock spell slots to fuel a font of sorcery. Well, and, yeah, and, I mean, well, from from what I've gathered, though, like you keep your list. It's not like multi-classing where you combine your slots and get a new list. Sure, sure. You keep your them separate, but mm -hmm. they are interchangeable between slots, if sure, I remember okay. correctly. I mean, that's how it is in multi-classing, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you do combine your, uh, you know, your two classes and look up on the multi-classing spell slot uh, chart but then you can use those slots to cast any spell you mm -hmm. know. Like I said, once you've committed yourself to this style of game, you know, you, you, there are some hard limits like the action economy and the like, but you've also committed yourself to kind of the wild <laughs> shit mm -hmm. that a warlock sorcerer, you know, uh, uh, fully leveled in both of its classes yeah. can, um, can produce. I think it's the longevity. The more I think about it, the more I think it's just like, the stalk characters probably don't have to rest as often. They probably don't have to, uh, you know, take as many breaks or like, or the, the mm -hmm. combats they can survive are going to be more endurance matches rather than like dealing with bigger threats themselves. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it feels very much uh, <coughs> like superheroes. Let's get to an area that, that I love just because of the pun of it, but the Gish Stalt characters. Gish Stalt. <laughs> uh, because everybody loves Gishes and everybody loves Gestalt and this is the perfect way to just just take two of those things mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. burst them together. Immediately, I start at um, the Eldritch Knight, yeah, Blade Singer, yeah. Just I, I start to get a little like like either that or the Kinsey Monk uh -huh. Blade Singer, uh -huh. yeah. Either way, yeah, either way. It's either like, way. do you want more magic and whatever, or do you want to be just like a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Kinsey Monk Blade Singer just makes me lightheaded. Even yeah, though, it, yeah, it, even it, though it's, it's, it's just mad. as mad yeah, as yeah. any of the others, whereas maybe Blade Singer uh, Eldritch Knight is sure, not. Int Dex all the way, baby. It's Int Dex, baby. Yeah. Uh, it's the easier way to get there, <laughs> right. and you still get all those spells. You get the lower level ones. You get your full casting mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. of Blade Singer. Yep. But getting like War Song and Song of Victory and all the things from both, where it's like Cantrip and Attack and Main Spell and Attack. Yep. I mean, like. That's hard to pass up for it's, a true, like, gish. Eldritch Knight Blade Singer really, really harkens back to what I consider the second edition Blade Singer, which is, it's a, um, you're, you're doing both, right? You, yeah. you know, you're, you're up front, you're attacking, you're using your magic to uh, enhance yourself in combat, mm -hmm. whereas the Blade Singer, at least as I see it now, is... I'm not sure I would ever play it where I'd get in melee, you know, if I was to play one. Yeah. And I know that that would be a problem for some DMs because they'd be like, well, you're a blade singer, you're a fighter mage. And I'd be like, well, I don't, yeah, but I'm still a wizard. <laughs> you know, I'm still, I'm still rocking a D6 will, hit die. Yeah. And, and, I will and, say, <laughs> once you get mobile, it's yeah, a hell of a lot yeah. more fun. Yes, I would say, I can say that. you just dip in, attack, and get out, and you're yeah. out of range. Yeah. And yeah. It, it totally, to me, mobile changes the blade singer and lets you do whatever the fuck you want. I can see that. I can definitely um, see that. Uh, being able to move about, especially with the enhanced movement mm -hmm. speed and everything. Um, yeah. So, and then I find the Eldritch Knight, it doesn't have enough magic for me. Right. You know, and I want more, uh, you know, I, I want to be able to use magic all the time. Now, some of that is that there's, you know, the kind of battle magic that I'm thinking of isn't necessarily in the game yet. It would look more like spell conversions from stuff from the Book of Nine Swords, mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the things that I'm thinking of now that are already there, Booming Blade, Zephyr Strike, they're really more in Paladin and Ranger 
uh, yeah. spell lists than anything else, which you might want consider. You know, you might like, oh, you know, I'm, I want to play a kind of blade, ma you know, blade mage type character, then, uh, you know, a, a hex blade warlock, or sorry, a warlock uh, ranger. I, in that sense, like a, a paladin warlock could oh. have all kinds of blade magic that is at their disposal that to me fits more with what I think of as a gish uh -huh. uh, than necessarily the blade singer Eldritch Knight. Although, it's, you know, I'm sure I'd have fun with my high elf noble blade singer Eldritch Knight. I yeah, mean, I'm I don't sure see how you up. couldn't. Um, <laughs> but I mean, also looking at like, um, like, a, like a college of valor or swords bard with either like Barbarian, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. fi or fighter, sure. Um, and double that up with blade singer, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, you know, but a lot of fun having skulls. a fun scald. Like I, everybody loves a scald. I do anyway. I can see that the scald archetype of the of the sort of the warrior poet, the mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the person who's there to record the saga of our deeds, yeah, but is not going to shy or shrink away from it. Uh, you know, when, once uh, blades are drawn, I can really sort of see that style of character working really well, and giving the barbarian something to do outside of their rages is always going to make for a more enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm thinking really there's some other kind of combos that I like the look of that I'm not sure how I'd make characters out of. <laughs> For me, it's like an Oathbreaker Necromancer is uh, is one of those, or like a Death Cleric Necromancer the is defiler. one of those. Yeah, where you're just sort of like, I, you know, that's, that's not necessarily a character I'd want to play, but the concept of it's pretty neat. What I'm mainly there for is the fact that Oathbreaker buffs undead. Yeah. And you would more be, you're more as like you would be, uh, my words, uh, you can really play this character more like someone who's at the back of a small group of really tough, really, uh, you know, just beefed up undead. And so you might take this character and it's like, all right, I'm going to animate a couple of zombies, equip them in plate, give them big pole arms. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be, you know, just uh, maybe one one step back from them, uh, you know, ready to protect myself. But like, I'm here to facilitate these two undead uh, combat machines that I ca that I cart around with me. And in that sense, um, I, you know, it could be I, I would just you know keep limit it to two, yeah. <laughs> and not have the army of uh, uh, you know, skeletal archers <laughs> that you oh, can yeah. uh, take with you. Yeah. Um, the other one I, I'm looking at it is something like a, a druid monk that finally a druid monk, uh, you know, that, that, that's using a quarter staff or something like shillelagh, the me the melee weapon using druid to me is an archetype that is missing from 5th edition. Yeah. And the druid monk really fits that. You do mm -hmm. shepherd, uh, land. Actually, land's not a bad idea because they get more cantrips. And there's some really cool land mm -hmm. uh, spell lists that uh, work. But... Yeah, and staying inside that combo but going a different way. Yeah. You go moon druid with that monk. Sure, yeah. And now you got some crazy animals throwing some flurries. Oh, my God. Some furries of blows. Yeah, some uh, furries of blows. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's called, furry but, of blows. But this is like, this raises to me an interesting concept, or like just an interesting byproduct of uh, thinking of characters in Gestalt is like, that's a missing combo there, right? Like we have uh, animal style, uh, say kung fu, mm -hmm. uh, you know, styles. Why and, are the five animals? Right. Mm -hmm. Why isn't the, Why can't we combine that with a shape shifting element so that our monk like takes on aspects literally yeah. of the animals that they are using the, the martial arts style of, and like. It, it's the merging of the two concepts mm -hmm. that I like the most about Gestalt, and mostly to me it inspires me to make a new subclass rather than play one of these monstrosities. A couple more, uh, I mean, and of course I'm gonna stay in the more fighting because it's me, uh, but like either you do like a fight, a samurai kinsai, yeah, uh -huh. would be just amazing, be or, really, yeah. or a battle master kinsai, Either yeah. of those, to me, would be an amazing uh, class to play. Yes. Saving throws aren't as great with fighter and monk. You know, there's a little overlap. Yeah, there's a know? little overlap there. To me, it's it's like you, you're losing the one of the bigger benefits of fighter, which is heavy armor, armor and, yeah. and the like. But you make up for some of that with Kensai. Can't use two-handed weapons, but you can use versatile, right? You can use versatile weapons. Mm -hmm. That's still a little bit more damage, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so y you have that. But also, um, I love the idea of a battle master. 
uh, 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 or I'm sorry, just like like any of the fighter rogues. Yes, there's a lot of fighter rogues. Like we mentioned earlier, it's really probably cool. the best thing you can do for uh, I think both saves and uh, 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 skills uh -huh. and ASIs. Sure. You're gonna get yeah, more yeah. skills. Yeah. You're gonna. Uh, I'm trying to remember the all the overlap. Uh, you're gonna get strength, the strength con from fighter for your saves, and, and then dex, and dex int, int. yeah, uh, from your. Uh, and then you get the rope. extra ASIs. Sure. Um, but yeah, any too. of the any of any fighter whatever, like I, I love the idea of a samurai uh, swashbuckler. Yeah. Because you're getting the bonus to in, in, in initiative. You're being able to get some temp HP, uh -huh. that advantage. You're and doing sneak your sneak attack. I mean, like. Right. 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 <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> that's that. That's an awesome Ronin samurai. It really like is. You're, right? it really you're is Ronin. Cool. You got to sneak around a bit. You're not. You yeah. can't just really do everything up front and in the open. No, but um, you know, you could probably do something like um, medium armor master. Uh, you know, that's that's the sort of build that I can see is leading heavily on both strength and dexterity, meaning that they've got the stats to support medium armor master. Mm -hmm. Which, if you've maxed out, you know, if you've got a 16 dex and you've got the feet, which you've got plenty of extra feats to pick that up then that can be a viable uh, AC. I know, I know a lot of people sort of scoff at medium armor, but it can be worth it if you've invested in, in a very particular type of, of well, I mean, uh, I've, done, I've done this with a couple of characters. If you can get your dex to 16 and get a breastplate, that's better than full plate because sure. now you can sneak. Because now you can sneak. And if it's a mithril full plate, that's even, uh, or no, sorry, I missed the full plate, mithril bless, breastplate. Uh, mm -hmm. You've even got more uh, just, I don't, know, I don't know, lightness there, I mm -hmm. guess. I like the Battle Master Mastermind, the Battle Mastermind. Yeah. Mostly because they've got those two abilities of like being able to read people mm -hmm. and gain information. The flavor of it's really cool. Like maybe they're a criminal mastermind or something, or mm -hmm. someone who's dedicated themselves to sort of like the study of people. Yeah. You know, they're a budding psychologist. Uh, or something like that. Um, I, I just I like I like the synergy between those two things. Fighter Rogue is a classic combo. Um, Eldritch Knight Arcane Trickster mm -hmm. is I've I've wanted to play one of those just as a multi class for a long time. I was gonna say you could give someone an attack and then with a bonus action from Mastermind give them advantage on that attack. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Uh, but I'm unfortunately, saying. you gotta. That's the only problem with Commander Strike is that to me you gotta give up too much to give uh, one yes, person yeah, an yeah, attack. Yeah, you do Commander Strike. It's very very that. situational where you're on one side of a chasm and yeah. you're like. Hit that guy. Hit that. Oh, no, no. What is it? Uh, Beastmaster Ranger Cavalier. Yeah, yeah, Beastmaster Cavalier. And do the full-on fucking, like, halfling yeah, riding, riding a wolf, wolf. And you yeah. can finally really do Princess Mononoke. You certainly could. You do it right. Good. Uh, there, there's a lot. It's like, there's so many different combos here that, that mm -hmm. because they're full classes, you're not, like, having to find the level breakdown of, right. of where, where's my split? Should I go mm -hmm. 614, 713, 218? You know, well, that's if you're even, uh, you know, thinking in terms of... 20 yeah. levels. Unless. God damn. You're gonna, you're I think gonna I, we have to mention it All since, right, since it is. Class. I mean, I know it's a, it's the D and D wiki, but it does mention multi-classing. <laughs> so on top of all of this. Now you can, if you want to drive yourself truly insane. Your dungeon master truly insane. Uh, drive, your dungeon master really insane. Which I would only allow this if it was literally like me and one person. Certainly. Yeah. Like, all right, make a 10th level character. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just you. Yep. And you can multi-class, yep. so you you've got your most effed up like two warlock, blah 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 on this side, and yep. six fighter and whatever on this side, and you got four classes in there somewhere. Oh. Yeah, what's your tenth level multi-class uh, gestalt look like? So on one side, it's fighter two, uh, rogue three, uh, paladin five. Well, that kind of sucks because then I don't get paladin six. But that gets me action surge, a level of assassin, plus uh, extra attack from uh, Paladin. Uh -huh. And then the other side is going to be Sorcerer 3, Warlock 7 for the invocations. And that's that's what the other side's going to look like. Yeah. In terms of subclasses, they are, well, Fighter, I'm not going to get a subclass. Rogue's going to be assassin. assassin. Paladin's most assuredly vengeance. Uh, <laughs> and then it's probably... Uh, shadow Sorcerer, maybe not Shadow, maybe uh, actually, yeah, probably Shadow uh, Sorcerer. And then um, just for flavor here, let's go Fiend. Fiend you know, and Bladelock? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, we yeah, had Hexblade. Hexblade? Uh, Hexblade. Take all these. So, yeah, you, the whole point of that build is that you, 
I'm probably going to take that warlock invocation that if I stay still, you're invisible. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have like kind of so on demand. Sea and dark. Sea and darkness. Uh, sea and darkness, most definitely. Uh -huh. And then the idea is that you just alpha strike and then GTFO. Yeah. You know, like. Throw up darkness. <laughs> throw up hit, darkness. Hit him in the dark. <laughs> assassin, divine smite with that. You pump all your. Uh, you know, warlock spell slots into it, and uh, which are at that level, seventh level warlock is going to be what fourth level spell slot, third yeah. or fourth, third or fourth. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like a fourth level because they, they advance at the same oh, yeah, seventh sure. level would be you get four yeah, level yeah, spells, yeah. With level, wizard yeah. or something. and so just do that. So it's like extra 48 plus the crit plus the thing, plus you get some a little attack. bit of sneak attack, well, but, but that's yeah, yeah. So the other option to do that is is two fighter, two paladin, um, and then the rest in uh, six uh, rogue. But then you're not necessarily getting extra attack uh, from that. So I don't know. That's sort of the monstrosity that that I may or may not show up with. I don't even want to think about <laughs> the show would grind to a halt if I had to like. I uh, probably would use out. a bow as well. I'm probably not using a melee weapon. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm gonna use a ranged weapon with that thing. Maybe that Jarl Axel's uh, dagger uh, <laughs> magic item. Most of them. <laughs> any, any any final thoughts on uh, on Gestalt? Everyone who has ever asked us, like, what do we think? What do you try? Like, try it. Like, is it? You know, you you don't know until you try to run a one shot with it or test it out for you know a, you know mini campaign or something. It tends to when you read the rules for it, you become overawed and stupefied by the options, and you forget that there's an action economy that they've got ma that they've got a single set of stats that they have to navigate and that they've still got the limited amount of hit points you are still the dungeon master and are not bound by any of those things and so uh it'll probably just take some trial and error to find yeah. a way to properly run a game for these characters yeah and next comes triple gestalt where it's Jesus. three no. if you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe web dm exists thanks to our patreon patrons the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our interview with Dale Kingsmill of Monarchs Factory YouTube channel. Web Demons is a proud partner of D&D Beyond, our favorite supplement for our D&D games. We've got a link to them in the description. Go and check them out. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching. Mm. Like a fresh baked pie. Yeah, mm. you could even be signing. These smell so good, I want to learn how to float through the air so I could find them in a room, preferably on a windowsill, cooling from their creation. A sign like the Joker. This town needs an enema. Yep. <laughs>